welcome back to another episode of Cryptid Ramblers. I'm Scott in the South End on Sea, and across from me is Callum in Basildon. Hello, hello. Hey, how we doing? You all right? Very well. Yeah, good man. How are you? Good. Yeah, I'm great, mate. I'm great. Glad to hear. Um, it. But for you, all our listeners. Uh, today you will be hearing about interplanet- interplanetary travel, quests for world peace, prophecies from God, and a space age blow drying toilet. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. <laughs> it's all firebrow content from here, mate. It really oh, absolutely. Is. <laughs> yeah, it's what people tune in to hear. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, as anyone that's listened to the previous episode, they know that we are going to be taking a look at a man named Valiant. Thor and Indeed. mate what a story is this yes absolutely it's uh it's one hell of a story it's uh certainly I think the most I think it's fair to say it's the most iman- imaginative uh that we've sort of come across uh in these you know five uh episodes um and it's certainly been the most fun to kind of dive into I think we've just the, yeah. the, just with the directions it goes in and the thing the details that it throws up um it's yeah i wouldn't say it's it's compelling but it's certainly uh certainly an incredible. interesting one <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely it's incredible um i had no idea it was gonna go in the direction that it has you know no, i was expecting no. something that i don't know I, I don't know what i was expecting really but not anything quite like what we've been looking into um, oh, it it took um various turns just when you think you can you figured it out and you know where it's going it's like a bam and it takes you in a different direction or it throws up a character or a, a scenario and you just think, wow, I wasn't, wasn't expecting that. And no. yeah, it's definitely one of the more fantastical ones that we've, um, that we've covered as well, which I know you'll cover um, later on in the, uh, <laughs> oh, in the yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah, we'll be talking about those space age blow drying toilets. That so, we uh... will. So stay tuned for that listeners. <laughs> stay that's, tuned uh, for excellent content. <laughs> yeah, Excellent exactly. content. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So, that is so for sure. what is the story? Who is so, Valiant for, Cal? Who, what did you find out? Well, yeah, let's start at the beginning. So, um, we are we're in Virginia this time. So it's not quite West Virginia, as, as we've both learned. They are actually different uh, different states. Um, but this one takes us to Alexandria, Virginia, on the sixteenth of March, nineteen fifty-seven. Um, I, I suppose for those that are interested, only only because I was, um, but Alexandria, Virginia is around 400 miles away from Point Pleasant, West Virginia, where we were in our last sort of couple of uh, episodes, which is roughly about a two and a half hour drive, I guess. Yeah, um, we, can't, we can't seem to get away from that part of no, the world. No, we, yeah, we, we're <laughs> firmly stuck in that part of the world. So, yeah, why not continue to, to stay there? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so 16th of March, 1957. Um, it starts with two local police officers um, on what is a routine patrol. Um, one of the two officers, um, just for informational purposes more so than anything, is a Sergeant Young. Um, mm. Not necessarily being confirmed, but it, the, the name crops up enough in the in the research. Um, right, yeah. They both uh, see a craft landing in a field um, close to where they're they're patrolling. Um, now, again, just for the kind of the sort of logistics and geography of it, uh, the field in question is roughly 14 miles from the Pentagon, uh, which, mm. of course, needs no uh, no introduction. Um, both the officers um, a- approach the, the craft, as I suppose anyone would in that situation, quite gingerly, I imagine. Um, I and as they do, a large metallic door on the craft uh, drops open. Uh, from within the craft steps out a single humanoid being. Um, now, again, we, we, there, there isn't too much of a compelling description of the of the craft from what I can, certainly from what I've um, found. I don't know about you, Scott, but the, the only yeah. real thing I've found is that it that the, the center of the craft consisted of nine stories. Yeah, um, that's pretty much so, what I've found out. I do have the dimensions. Um, okay, go on. So, this this particular craft, which does have a name, um, yes. is called it's called Victor One. So it's a Victor Absolutely. class craft, and it's three hundred foot in diameter, right? And twenty two feet high at the rim, so at the very yeah. edge of the flying saucer. Yeah, so that's, that's the right. uh, the shape that's being described. Yes. And in the centre, 
it is 97 feet tall on the axis. So that's the right, uh, sure. dimensions yeah. that we'll get from that. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, so yeah, the, the, the only, the, the real telling bit of the, I, I didn't get the, the dimensions actually, um, interestingly, so thanks for that. But yeah, so I, I only found the bit about the, the, the center, the, the center sort of column was believed to be around nine stories in height. So if you imagine like a block of flats or something and what nine stories would yeah. look like, that's kind of what I imagine. So it's, it's quite a sizable craft um, in the, the grand scheme of things. Um, so, yeah, so the, the, the humanoid being who, who walks out, um, we later know, or we know now, uh, is named Valiant Thor. Um, he assigns himself this name um, as the name given to him on his home planet wouldn't be pronounced by, by us mere mortals, um, yeah. our, us mere earthlings. Um, yes. Most people actually refer to him as Val, um, sort of for short, but uh, yeah, Valiant Thor is uh is the name he he gives himself um now where that comes from in terms of where he thought of that um there is um a, a sort of a a slight theory i guess basically just mm. from what valiant means um and yeah and obviously uh, i think i think they do reference thor the the norse god as, as being the influence for for that part of the name and that's and, right it and does, kind of yeah. what he instills in you know Norse um, mythology, but aside from that, it, it just seemingly, you know, from what we know, it was, it was kind of made up. By, it's almost made like up by uh, it's almost like the, the the closest Earth trans or English translation as to what his name is yeah. on his planet. Um, yeah, exactly, which yeah. you know he couldn't speak the the language that they speak there because, quite frankly, we wouldn't be able to understand it. No. Um, he supposedly no. speaks fluently over a hundred languages. Yeah, apparently that's one, so. of the, yeah. that's one of the things about Val. Yeah, no, absolutely, no, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so Valiant Thor um, approaches the two officers after exiting the craft, um, who at this point have already drawn their weapons and aimed, aimed them firmly at their new acquaintance um, to immediately immediately calm their nerves. Uh, Valiant Thor through um, thought transference which uh, listeners will know mm. we covered in the uh, Injured Cold episode, um, basically tells the officers that they have nothing to fear. He's not here to harm them. Um, and it's essentially, a, you know, by coming peace type uh, message um, for, for the most part. <laughs> oh, nano, nano, shazbat. Nano, nano, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nano, nano. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come he, in uh, peace. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, he uh, so, so, so once he's kind of you know alleviated all fears and, and sort of concerns, he does in fact then tell uh, the two officers through this thought transference that he needs to have an audience with none other than the president of the United States, um, who at the time uh, was Dwight D. Eisenhower. Um, Eisenhower. Now, from what we from what we understand, although there was never a firm plan put in place certainly from what i've um, found but the mm. the conversation with the president was basically to warn the united states um again against harboring nuclear weapons and the technology involved in that um and that basically it was going to bring about war not prevent it so basically if you kind of along the lines of you know if, if you carry out a, you know an aggressive mm. An aggressive task to prevent war you're actually going to inadvertently gonna cause, cause it. it so it's going to yeah. have a you know a adverse effect um essentially yeah so it's almost like it's it starts saying the best the opposite of saying the best defense is a good offense yeah because basically. that's basically what they're yeah, saying absolutely. it's like who's got yeah. the bigger rock yeah that's pretty that's exactly oh, I'll say, in a nutshell that's kind of what was happening with regards to the cold war wasn't it yeah it was like, where can we move were... our nukes so that yeah, exactly. you're in trouble but they were on the brink of that with um you know with with russia and yeah from what i can tell you know another you know analogy that i quite like is that it was basically a dick swinging contest between uh <laughs> yeah. between the two countries <laughs> um and yeah valiant thor's kind of whole message was to kind of you know prevent that by kind of mm. saying look you think that harboring these weapons and this technology will help you in actual fact it's going to do the opposite so it was counterproductive essentially um yeah. 
which does come with its own truths. So it would be very hard to kind of disprove that or, you know, have any kind of negative thought towards that that as a, a general message. Again, yeah, it's, it's a it's a pretty good message to get out there. You know, pretty good no argument. Nukes. Yeah, it's pretty you solid. Know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no nukes, no nukes. You know, yeah, it's exactly. Like, yeah, it's a no, good absolutely. idea, people. Yeah, pretty much. Again, we don't we don't know how he intended on executing that plan, or you know no, whether there were any more in depth conversations with regards to that. But we know yeah, that, that was I, that was his. I couldn't his find anything. I couldn't yeah, find I anything couldn't solid find anything. as to what exactly his plan was, like what he was proposing to yeah, exactly, um, yeah. to Eisenhower. I mean, you could speculate that it was like stuff like um, you could probably think like it's simple stuff like health advice. Um, you know, the, yeah, the thing exactly, like drugs, yeah. pharmaceuticals, and such yeah. like that, um, lifestyle choices, uh, medical yeah, exactly. innovations, and even technological innovations. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, we later find out that aside from the nuclear war, um, you know, sort of element or, or prevention, at least, that he was also there to kind of help basically treat the biggest known diseases to, to mankind, prevent things like famine and poverty. Um, and uh, supposedly, yeah, but the, but the supposedly main... a cure for cancer as well. That was something so, that was yeah. Dying supposedly about, wasn't it? that was the apparently that was the big thing with the the, the diseases was that he had a a surefire way of um of of curing cancer supposedly. It's all right, Val. They've already got it. They've already they've already got it. <laughs> they've yeah, they've already got it, Val. Don't you worry, son. This is probably where we need <laughs> another uh, trigger warning put in somewhere. But uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, he um. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah a conspiracy so, page is it let's be honest well exactly yeah exactly um so yeah so the, the poverty disease and famine were, were some of the other kind of um points that he wanted to kind of raise but the, the main thing was the um was the uh was the the nuclear weapons now whether he had mm. some kind of foresight into the the, the, sort of the cold war or whether it was just in general you don't really well, want to be harboring this I don't know. Supposedly they've been they've been watching her for a very very long time. Very long time. Um, yeah, yeah. Very very long time. And I'll, I'll go into that part of it as to how long. Yeah. They've been watching yeah. Earth. Yeah. Exactly, um, I'll go yeah. I'll go into that bit a bit later on. Yeah. No. Definitely. Yeah. No. We'll save that for for later. Definitely. Um. So once this this request had been made by a Valiant Thor to have an audience with the president again through the power of thought transference. Uh, the two officers quickly ushered Valiant Thor into the back of their patrol car and uh, made their way to the Pentagon. Um, again, for those that don't know, um, like myself at the point of researching, um, the, the Pentagon is in Arlington, Virginia, um, which is on the outskirts of, uh, of Washington. Um, the journey from the field in which Valiant Thor landed in Alexandria to the Pentagon is around a 15 minute drive um mm. using google you know good old uh, google maps i'm sure as the crow flies yep. it's a lot quicker but uh yeah looking at about quarter of an hour drive he pretty quite... much landed in the car park didn't he pretty honest. much yeah more or less yeah more or less <laughs> um so yeah for context yeah about 15 15 minute drive um so after making what is a fairly short journey uh, in the grand scheme of things they pull up outside the pentagon and are immediately met by um, the US Secretary of State um, and six of his supporting members of staff, i.e. Secret Service, I think is, yep. is probably I think that's a fair what means. assumption. Now, interestingly, and I don't know if you found this, but in the research that I did, not just from the main source, but but other, mm. other sources, um, it's not actually directly confirmed who the secretary of state was he doesn't name who it is that walks out with the secret service he, he, they're just referred to as the secretary of state which i thought was quite an interesting i noticed that as well mission of information obviously we'll come on to more of those things later on in the episode but that was the, yeah. the kind of the first one for me that that sort of jumped out um now again using you know good old google um so i hope this is right um it looks like mm. Uh, the Secretary of State at that time, certainly between 56 and 57, would have been a John Foster Jules or do do Dules Jules. It, it, I'm butchering the pronunciation. Wasn't, but it's spelled D D U L L E S. So John Foster Jules. Jules. 
I guess, um, I guess that's how you pronounce that's, it. Well, that's any, why I went with. Any yeah. of our listeners from over that way who know their history, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be please tell us. Be general, <laughs> please be gentle. Yeah. Please confirm please correct well. us. Uh, although there are some people, uh, for, again, this is from um, other sources that I've listened to, uh, namely the extraterrestrial podcast that I, I come across on uh, on Spotify. Yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah, they believe it was Charles Irwin Wilson um, but I have since found out from my research that he was actually the Secretary of Defence, whereas in the book, it's the Secretary of State yes. who greets him. And so, Just uh, because we mentioned the book, it's worth mentioning what book we've actually taken this information from. It's uh, Stranger yes. at the Pentagon by yep. Dr. Frank E. Strangis. Yes, that's right. So yep. when we refer to that's what he said, it's because we're referring to Frank Strangis. So, yeah, so exactly well, yeah. i just realized exactly right. we hadn't actually mentioned the book we had well, no, I, was, I was coming on to that in, <laughs> the, uh, in this bit but no it makes sense to mention that yeah that that's the the main source material for this part of the encounter and much of what we're going to discuss uh in the uh in, in the episode so so yeah so the secretary of state and uh six uh supporting members greet them immediately outside the uh the, the pentagon um and uh yes yeah, an initial introduction uh, ensues um now whoever it whoever the secretary of state was uh basically he escorts valiant thor into the pentagon um there was a, a brief conversation but it for, from what i've from what i've seen it was mostly kind of pleasantries um there wasn't any small talk there wasn't any such. thought transference or anything like that it was all kind of small talk you know welcome you know, I understand you want to speak to the president. Um, like, follow just me. Walk up to the door. You can't just walk and knock on the door and, yo, president, let's have a word. Yeah, you well, exactly. Yeah. So I'm guessing there is a process, although seemingly as I carry on, it does seem like that process at the time seemed quite easy <laughs> to get to yeah. uh, the president's office in the uh, in the in the Pentagon. So so he's escorted in inside um, from from wherever they they meet. Um, now they all walk straight in um, to, I can't remember the description he uses, but it's essentially like a, a hidden door within one of the walls of the uh, Pentagon as they walk in at this kind of ground floor level. Mm. Um, it opens up um, to reveal um, an elevator. Um, That's right. Now they all they all get in. So uh, so uh, Thor, the, the the two officers that escort him have left him at this point. They've, they've, yeah, they've remained and that was just... He's outside. handed over to the Secret Service. Yeah, so it's now the Secret Service and yeah, the the US Secretary of State. They so they all enter into the elevator, um, and this takes them down to an even lower level um at the site, um, which then opens out onto essentially an underground train station. Um now again from again we'll, we'll cover this a little bit more later on, but again from my research, there isn't actually anything to officially confirm. That there is a train station of sorts within that's the been, Pentagon. So that's been a rumor that's been yeah. jumping about for a very long time. Yeah, exactly. But again, only, only. I mean, again, they probably wouldn't necessarily want to come out and corroborate that kind of story or claim. But there's nothing compelling I could find anyway to say, yep, this definitely exists or, or whatever. Um, but we'll come on to things like that again, as I say uh, uh, later on. Um, so this this train um, supposedly leaves the Pentagon and takes them. So they're on a carriage at this point um, and takes them straight down a tunnel, which leads them directly to the White House. Um, so underground train, as the crow flies, you'd yep. imagine, straight from the Pentagon to uh, to, the, to the, the White, White House. House indeed. Um, yep. Again, for context, uh, the rough distance between the Pentagon and the White House is about 10 minutes in car. So by, by a secret uh, train... You'd imagine underground it'd be fairly, train it'd be about be five quicker. yeah if that yeah so yeah substantially quicker um so yeah so upon reaching the white house they are then met by more members of the uh secret service now this is where the the conversations get a little less um i guess easy for um our visitor uh valiant thor um, mm -hmm. He has to then start reusing the thought transference on these new Secret Service agents um, to basically convince them 
uh, to take him straight to the president's office. Um, there's there's not much. So now, is it on. is it just thought? This is what I what, this is. I don't know if it's just my suspicious mind or anything like that, you know. But is it just a thought transference, or is he trying to convince them? I am no threat. I'm really no threat. I'm. Mm. It's almost like um, like that bit that Austin Powers does in the first film. Now I want you to go across the street and get me some orange sherbet. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Is he trying yeah. to do a bit of that? Well, the old yeah. inter, intergalactic man of mystery, Valiant Thor. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, oh hey. Hey. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, thank you. I think it's uh, all jokes aside. I think it is a mixture of the two. I think it's he knows who he has to speak to directly. I think he can tell, this yeah. is Valiant Thor, he, he can tell who holds the power at, at certain points in his journey. And so he's probably seen that there's like a head of the team of the, you know, he recognizes the service. hierarchy. Yeah. He, he, he sees a clear line. And so, you know, to not bring in the, the lesser kind of mortals into the conversation, he concentrates his energy and time on one in particular. So I think it's, mm. yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's an easier form of communication for him because as we later find out, it's what they tend to use on, you know, their, their home planet. So he, he kind of just slips into it. Like it's his, you know, first language, I suppose. But yeah, as you say, it's also then I think to convince them um, to, to, yeah, to basically gain him in, entry, basically, to kind of say, yeah. look, I'm not, I'm not here as a threat. You know, th these are my intentions, you know, I mean, almost, <laughs> almost as like a kind of, you know, a Jedi mind trick, you know, you will let me in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you will yeah. take me to I, your presence. I am not the threat you are looking for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, so again, mostly pleasantries, a kind of, you know, who are you? What do you want? Using the power of, you know, thought transference, he convinces them to continue on his journey and escort him into the White House up to, um, the the president's uh, president's office, president's office. Um, the oval office. The oval office. Um, so they they, I mean, there's a lot of fluffy details in between about descriptions of you know walkways and hallways and doors and everything else. But I, I didn't really think that was particularly necessary no, for it, the, the purposes of the maybe, story. But yeah, maybe a bit too of, much detail on, on in in that respect. I think Jesus, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's nuts. Um, so. Yeah, so they, they enter into the room, which we would presume is the Oval Office. Um, President Dwight D. Eisenhower uh, greets uh, Valiant Thor by standing out from behind his desk uh, and reaching out a, a hand to to shake uh, vows, basically. Um, mm. The Secret Service agents not expecting this immediately pull out their guns and point them at Valiant Thor. Um, noticing the unease you know, in the rooms and especially amongst the agents in particular, the president then reported these states, I'm not afraid of you. What is your name? Hmm. Uh, at this point, obviously, Valiant Thor confirms his his name or at least his his earth name um, to the, the, the president, as well as the fact that he is from Venus. Although, yeah. as we know, uh, well, we yeah. know, but the listeners won't know, but in the book, it's, it's kind of claimed that he actually tells Eisenhower, uh, I am from what your Bible refers to as the morning and evening star. Which uh, uh, Eisenhower oh, questions up like, Venus? And he goes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Which, um, um, yeah, which is, a, I suppose, if in, in their own language, they've yes. got a name for their planet, you know, quite likely they've got a different name for Earth, you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I suppose yeah, exactly. he would just go, I know what you refer to it as. Yeah, um, so they use that as a direct reference. Again, it was probably to break down walls, you know, to kind of create that sense of calm, and also yeah, not. The Bible has always been quite a prominent book in American society, and especially within American government. Yeah. Well, when um, he confirms as well, I think later on in the book, I think Valiant Thor does confirm, doesn't he? I think you'll probably touch on this later, but he he confirms that that basically every planet um, that is inhabited by um, life has its own Bible. So there's a right, yeah. there's a common reference or at least a common theme throughout all of that. So he he knew that he, if he used the Bible, it would be a center 
focal point for anyone, even mm. if you're not particularly religious, you would have heard of, of the Bible. So yeah, good point of reference to probably help create that familiarity and, like I say, break down, you know, any kind of walls or you know, break the ice, I guess. An, That's right. An yeah. Alien icebreaker, I guess. Um, so but he um, he goes and asks him for a bit of proof, doesn't he? He does. I know, like, can can does. you prove that that you come yeah. from Venus? You know. Yeah, he does. Yeah, um, and. He, yeah, he, so yeah, he, as you say, the, the president asks for, uh, Thor for proof as to who he is and, and sort of where he comes from. Um, and yeah, he, he basically, Valiant Thor invites the president along to, to see his ship, which is obviously still parked over in Alexandria. Um, it, it's quite a lengthy response, um, but in a nutshell, Eisenhower basically says that due to security protocols, uh, including committee clearance, he can't just simply follow him to no. the, the ship. Um, the, the, but I know mate, you've actually the... got the transcript, Scott, haven't you? So, I do, yeah. yeah I've, got, I've got what he says. Um, so, yeah, Valiant Thor, he asks him, you know, we'll, as, a, as proof, do you want to come and see my ship? Um, and Eisenhower says, my friend, I cannot come and go as I please. Uh, there are others to be considered. There are committees to be consulted, security measures to be adhered to. Yeah. Please spend some more time with us here. Let's get better acquainted and learn more from one another. Um, and perhaps soon, real soon, well, we will see. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of like, look, mate, I'm the president of the United States. I can't yeah. just come, come and go willy-nilly. I can't you just leave I mean? this place on my own or, uh, you know, unarmed or unaccompanied yeah. and just come to your spaceship just because you've asked me to. Yeah, there are security protocols yeah. and a process that needs to be followed, um, yeah, which I is mean, fair it, enough. It, 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 could go, it could go completely the opposite direction. I mean, it could be coming across as really nice, really friendly, and then suddenly, bosh, Mars attacks. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. <laughs> exactly, you know, yeah. you'd be in shot with a green or red beam laser. <laughs> they came from the other way they came from mars that was the other way was it mars sorry yeah no. they came from mars yeah, this is the other way they're the good ones yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um so yeah so conveniently at this point um vice president richard nixon um comes bursting into the room he's obviously caught word that there's an important guest in speaking to the president and he obviously wants a, a slice of that pie um he does he uh he immediately tells Valiant Thor that he that Thor has caused quite a, a stir for a, an out of towner, which is apparently a direct quote. Um, and he puts and again, he puts his hand out to to shake that of uh, Valiant Thor's. Um, Nixon also comments that no one actually believes that he came in a UFO um, because the more likely scenario is that Sergeant Young has just gone mad, um, and that's kind of the general belief. Um, from when the call initially came in, um, supposedly to the the Pentagon at, at, at that point. Um, yeah. So again, there's a bit of uh, sort of I guess friendly banter and more pleasantries between Nixon and uh, Valiant Thor. Um, and at this point, uh, President Eisenhower offers the opportunity to Valiant Thor to work with the U.S. government, you know, as Thor proposes yeah. um but for, it was kind of not kind of on the condition that they are allowed to run tests um specifically on the material that the valiant Thor's suit is made of yeah so like he um, kind of offers it up as like a um a gesture of goodwill like, like a bargaining chip part, sort of thing. Past, you know partially this is proof of yeah. what i'm saying i'm from a different planet you know, exactly. I've got this material that I wear. Uh, yeah. Come on, have a have a look at it. Do run your tests. Do what you need to do with it. Yeah. Um, but if I allow you to do that, would you allow me to advise you on these different bits and pieces? Pretty and much, yeah. He, he, he came to him with a plan, didn't he? It was a compromise. Well, he, he came with he, he came with intent, but as as we said earlier, we're not sure exactly what his plan was in terms of how he was going to, you know, yeah. uh, execute his intention. Very vague. It? That bit is very is very vague, which I don't know could be convenient or could just be happenstance. Mm. That, you know, you don't don't really know at this uh, at this point. Um, so the main reason for the testing was um, basically to see how durable it was against things like fire, gunfire, um, and what they refer to, or certainly what strangers refers to as space lasers, which uh, did uh, 
yeah, it did make it's me very nineteen fifties that isn't it? very much so. Yeah, very much so. Um, they're not just lasers, but they're exactly. space lasers. Space lasers, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, he did strange in the book does go into a uh, a description of the suit. Um, you know, mm. it, it's. It's, it's a very, it's very lightweight material, it's, it's, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's it's a lightweight material, and it, it's kind of like a jumpsuit, or kind of like you know, like you've seen those onesies that have the three piece suits printed onto them. The way he describes <laughs> yeah. it immediately gave me that image because he says suit. that morph suit. That's what that's it. That's yeah. it. So it's like a morph suit with a tuxedo or a three piece suit printed onto it because he mm. says that it's a very thin, lightweight material, but it doesn't have any buttons or zips or or uh, lapels or, or anything like yeah. that but to the human eye from what i could tell it looks like any standard suit but the belief yeah. is that it very much wasn't that and so that's yeah. what kind of intrigued everyone the most not the fact that he came on this whacking great big bloody ufo or he's from another <laughs> planet the thing that caught their attention was his bloody suit which i did yeah. think was quite <laughs> quite funny and and yeah, you, you could tell fashion that fashion sense you know yeah. odd fashion sense and that's what that's what they were worried about exactly is, yeah that was you the, know the making of the man that his suit and what he what yeah. clobbery was wearing <laughs> so, from, from what i got from what i got from the description as well like the, even like the feel of the material it, it sounded a lot mm. like um what we'd call like under armor or the brand Under Armour, but that yeah, that you know the, those athletic uh, athletic t shirts yeah. that you that you would yeah, exactly wear. that yeah yeah exactly that and um, it, it, Strange does go into quite a, again quite an elaborate description of the material and stuff, but I, again mm. I didn't the fact think it's it completely indestructible as well. Well, you know, yeah, it's... indestructible, impenetrable, and, and all this. So you, could, so you could tell that why the American government would be specifically interested in that because mm. they would obviously want to try and harbor that material to then make you know their soldiers you know impenetrable armor especially if they're on the brink of a nuclear war could they use it to their advantage you know that, that kind of thing so it was, it was unsurprising that that was the main thing because it was probably something that they could see you know they could touch right then and there without letting yeah, them go exactly they could get their hands on it there and then and they didn't mm. want to lose sight of it whilst they had the opportunity so it was kind of like you know, well, we'll scratch your back if you scratch ours, sort of mm. thing. So yeah, and very much they, a compromise. Uh, and then they invited, and I'm using quotation marks here, invited him to stay at the Pentagon yes. for three years. Yes, it was a three-year stint that he was um, that, that he was offered. <laughs> and three-year porridge. That's what exactly. That was. Yeah, and he was um, yeah, he was given a furnished apartment um, within the confines of uh, the Pentagon. Yeah, as you as you rightly say to. Yeah, to kind of carry out his work, uh, to let them ask him questions, to run their tests on his, um, you know, his suit and find out what they can regarding that. Um, but yeah, but the, the, the main thing for Valiant Thor was that he was going to work with these US officials, these government scientists to kind of mm. impart his knowledge and wisdom onto them to kind of say, look, for absolutely free, I'm offering you up all this info to cure diseases uh, prevent famine and poverty um and and also to advise as to why harboring you know nuclear materials and and technology is a bad idea um yeah. you know like you would need someone from another planet to tell you that but um you know you well, maybe, maybe the powers that be they don't they don't live the same way we do do they <laughs> well, they exactly, don't think yeah. the same way we do no no clearly not no um there was a again i didn't write it down because i didn't think it added much weight to this part of the the encounter but there was a funny excerpt from the book where um where where valiant thor wants to leave the white house to basically go back to his ship to collect materials and you know change of clothes and you know whatever else yeah and he opens the door to his apartment and he's met immediately by two armed secret service agents um and one of them turns around to him and, and says oh, where do you think you're going um uh, and he says well am i not allowed to leave and move around freely as i wish um and they don't say no but they say to him something like, well, we don't, we, we can't have you walking around all the unrestricted areas of the Pentagon, including this hallway. 
<laughs> which is basically saying, <laughs> yeah. get the hell back in yeah. your room. You're not going yeah. anywhere, son, without get actually back telling in your him. apartment. Yeah, because he, he Thor then questions them and says, well, I, am I a, I thought I was a guest of the US government. Is that not the case? Am I actually a prisoner? And they, they sort of come back with some sort of quip along the lines of, well, you're not, um, you haven't got a cell, you've got an apartment. Yeah. Um, so, basically, mate, you've been invited to stay. So basically, you've you've been yeah unknowingly yeah. forced to stay here so we can examine well, you. He, he does actually get about though, doesn't he? He gets he does about, eventually. He does, but he he does it with the power of visualization. So yes. he's not been given top secret access, or he's not been given a pass for anything at all. He, he just wanders played. around, and with the power of visualization, yeah, makes a person the, the security guard in front of him see a pass inside yeah. his jacket well he, he does that no. then I, I think that's what you're referring to he does that then to those two agents he, he sort of mm. a, a later time when so, he yeah he, by the way or, i've got this he, yeah he basically says oh look at this fancy new pass that the president got made for me which gives me unrestricted access to the entire pentagon and then one of and they're like oh yeah okay how okay. bad on. yeah on you go yeah yeah. you know it's travel freely like the, you know <laughs> this is not the pass you're looking for okay <laughs> yeah, exactly. anyway it's, yeah. this isn't the pass we're looking for going on you, you will go. you will let me through <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> yeah. exactly it he's, it is he's, exactly he's, that jedi mind tricks exactly to get right. around the pentagon and find out all the secrets george lucas was onto it man he, he knew oh, his yeah, stuff george yeah. lucas knew man <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, um yeah it's it's, it's it's worth saying that unfortunately as we do know that the mm. American government just, just decided now nah, we're not going to no I think this... along with your proposal because it's going to disrupt yeah. the American economy you know basically I think what they'd done is they'd they'd kind of exhausted all the tests that they could on either Valiant Thor and his clothing and any other technology he may have had on him and it just got to a point where they were they probably thought well you know we can't get anything out of you anymore mm. we've sort of exhausted everything that we can now it's no longer out for our benefit off you pop you know yeah um and yeah this was conveniently i think almost three years to the day that this sort of conversation uh happened because yeah as you rightly say he was he was met with nothing but flat refusals to all of his uh proposals to to basically help humanity this wasn't this wasn't restricted to just the united states it was with the intention of kind of passing out the message to you know the, the, the rest leaders, of the rest of the world all the world leaders yeah. but it was and and like it is today to a certain extent the states was seen even then as you know the most powerful country in the world or you know on this planet mm. therefore that's probably the best place to start because if you can convince the states to do it then it would trickle down to their allies and and you know and with with mm. time you know you would hope it would spread throughout the you know the other the, the other countries and as you say bring in the other world leaders and stuff yeah. um so, but the, the, the main influence, um, cause I don't think as from what we believe Eisenhower was very much on board with Thor's kind of proposal and his intentions with why he was there and why he wanted to work with the government. Um, but unfortunately Eisenhower, like many presidents had people kind of in his ear informing him of, you know, kind of their, their thoughts and intentions and via a, uh, shadow council as it's referred to uh, within the u.s government um they advised eisenhower to stop working with thor specifically um mm. and again as you rightly say they were concerned that the proposals made by valiant thor were going to negatively affect the american economy and more specifically their corporate interests yeah um and so the military industrial complex really you know, basically That's basically yeah, what, basically what the pharmaceuticals the 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 military um you know aspect of it and all those things would collapse because if mm. all of these things that valiant thor promised were to come to fruition there would be no need for things like war military weapons yeah. and, and all that kind of thing so yeah that they they got panicked straight away and was like yeah president we don't think you should uh you know you don't think you should we, you know you should do this uh, and i think that the, the the fact that eisenhower was kind of on board with that is again i haven't got the word for word speech but i know in in 1961 uh, he does make an address doesn't he um he does was it to nato or the united nations or someone um 
where he basically this all could just be convenience um or it does um uh, it could consequ- be the farewell address 1961 yeah it could could well be that but he basically he, he essentially reiterates valiant thor's message without directly naming he valiant does, thor or his interest it is, uh, sorry it is not the his one interest, where he does warn about the military industrial complex that's that is it. the one that's it yeah that's it? the one and which you people, can find on youtube um you, you, you just check out yeah uh, eisenhower warns military industrial complex in 1961 yeah. it's quite a, again it's quite a lengthy speech so mm. i didn't want to go through it blow by blow but the, the, yeah. the general context of it is that he kind of reiterates valiant, valiant thor's influence and his proposals in this in you know in this address um but yeah but this is a, obviously a year after um, Valiant Thor leaves um, yeah. the, the states and and well, well he leaves the Pentagon. He leaves isn't he? That's when he leaves. Yeah, the, yeah he leaves. Yeah. He leaves the uh, Pentagon, and not long before he actually does leave the Pentagon, he gets um, he makes a request to meet a certain someone, doesn't he? Well, he he does. Yeah, yeah I mean, just I mean, yeah. Obviously, this is where that's, the, that's the what I got from it anyway. That's you know that he well, he made the request to yeah there's a reason strangers there's a reason for that and that's because obviously he was hoping to go kind of to the the main source you know the the the, the, the top gun obviously going to the, the president that didn't work he then um has to go back to his uh ship and confirm to his superiors that he's failed his init- initial mission um he's then given another task which comes with a very fairly specific um set of instructions mm. um i've got them written down but i believe you've got them as well scott did yeah, you want to yeah i've got them yeah go i'll take them? that bit yeah there's no problem yeah. um yeah so the instructions that you got from the central control which seems to be like the, the counseling body um yes on the planet of mars um venus to which uh venus thank venus, you see, you did make, thank made you. my mistake <laughs> I, I want to go the other way, don't I? <laughs> yeah. It's all about Mars at the moment. It's all about mate. there, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so on Venus, pardon, pardon the uh, the, the slip. Um, and it's uh, so he's got a set of instructions, and that's to mingle with and become as Earth people. That's right. Um, to work and labour in Earth enterprises. Mm-hmm. To help those who encounter possible threat or danger while striving for world peace. Yeah. To give them advice and guidance. Yeah. Trust with superior knowledge of those who have proven themselves. Yeah, that's right. And to divulge the essence of their mission to the collective national leaders of the earth only yes. when the time is right. Only when the time is right. And to us, although it, it takes a slightly different turn to you know, in the last couple of points, when I first read this, I just felt, thought of a, you know, beauty pageant entrant when you know they say, oh, so what do you want to treat? Oh, I want I want world peace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to help the poor. <laughs> yeah. Talk, yeah, because uh they, like they, you just they, talking they, to Miss America or something like is this actually oh, that, <laughs> that Miss America speech that is yeah. brilliant. And if you must know what we're talking about there. Yeah. Which is you know, exactly. world peace and such and, and uh, such. It was <laughs> an absolute disaster. <laughs> but, but so yeah. entertaining. Oh, it's brilliant. I mean, wrongly or rightly, that was especially when you read the first probably three (laughs) i'd say the first three or four instructions within that task that that's the first thing that popped into my head wrongly or right but it did make me uh it did make me laugh but yeah exactly so he's he's given these new set of instructions and he sort of thinks to himself right well i've gone to the people that you know have the power that can make the decisions that hasn't worked for me um he said maybe i need to work with earthlings you know, people mm-hmm. on the ground floor, the, the shop floor, as it were, and and sort of get a, a you know, a, a, a sort of a gathering or a, a, you know, a cult of people, if you like, to follow me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't use the C word, man. Don't use the C word. You know, to follow <laughs> in, in his message and, and hopefully believe in his um, principles. Now, yeah. the, the chap that he comes into contact with is kind of, he's almost the perfect candidate because he's a UFO enthusiast and he's also supposedly a man of god so he's an evangelist an evangelist oh, so he's oh, got the supposedly you say suppose well we'll come on to that later <laughs> <laughs> so okay, just dropping little breadcrumbs through the episode um, to, to get into the end bit but yeah so he's 
an, an evangelist preacher and a UFO enthusiast. So mm. that kind of ticks the two boxes of the kind of person that you would need to kind of speak to well, an alien from another planet. Person, it's the sort of person that Val needs to speak to. Exactly. That was the point. Yeah, that was my point. Yeah. That's the sort of person that Val would want to speak to to best kind of communicate his, you know, message, especially because it's all about, you know, improving and bettering mankind. Mm. Um, and also it's got to come by way of an alien. So you've got those two. <laughs> complete- exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you've got two, those two kind of main kind of essences really that come together. And so this guy was, yeah, was kind of seen as the, um, as the, the, the perfect, candidate uh, and so that kind of brings so this brings us on to um where this encounter comes from as we as, yes. as scott rightly mentioned earlier in the episode it came from a dr frank Ernest strangers and his book specifically uh, titled stranger at the pentagon um mm. now he strangers um his involvement with you know valiant thor which gives us this encounter um occurs some sort of two years after he uh, Valiant Thor lands in Alexandria, um, Virginia. Um, Mm -hmm. It happens in December of 1959 in Washington, D.C. at a UFO conference. Um, He now obviously, as well as being a man of God, he was also a a novelist, a writer, and, and he'd recently brought out a book called Flying Sorcerama, and he was at this conference specifically to do book signings and to talk about, you know, kind of his beliefs and how he came to write in this book. Um, he's so he's going he's going through this you know, kind of standard book signing for anyone who's been to like a Comic Con or, you know, you know, queued up at Waterstones to get a book signed. You know the kind of deal. People just walk up, hand them a book. He signs it. They walk off like a conveyor yeah. belt of of people. Yeah, you don't get um, to ask questions. Yeah, exactly. Pay for that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Fucking arm and a leg as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, you've been there. <laughs> I've done it. Yeah, I've done it. I've been the mugger that's paid it. So, um, but uh, yeah, so so he's a few people come through the queue. He, he you know signs the book, thanks them for coming. They move on. He, he's he's going through a, a few fans doing the signings, and he he clocks a, a woman just to the the side of the queue. Who you know at this point, he's looking a bit kind of a bit nervous possibly a bit shifty but she's got a copy of his book in her hand so he instantly just thinks oh, i was just a, a nervous fan who's not quite you know mustered up the courage to you know sort of meet me so he waits for her in her own time to approach him which she does and she she walks up with her book um i don't believe she she sort of says anything but she just slips the book in front of him and it's closed at this point so he has to open the book to us. He gets that first blank page where he can, you know, put his scribble on it. Mm. And he notices that within the pages of the book, as he opens it is a, uh, higher security level Pentagon ID. Um, now I, we've since found is out that her own one. Is it? I believe it's her own security. High it's not one for him. Is it? I don't, I don't think it was no, because, I mean, this comes out later on in the interaction between these two. Um, but she, so I think, I believe it's hers. Now, we don't know her real name because like a few other characters that pop up in this encounter, Strangers yeah. is quite keen on protecting their identity. Um, again, it's another thing that I pointed out, which again, we can cover more later, but he name drops Nixon and Eisenhower, but he won't give us the name of this pentagon employee yeah which is just a bit again it's a bit strange but again we'll come on to yeah. that we'll, we'll get to that yeah so, much later on. yeah so i believe it's a uh a, a pentagon id of hers which basically confirms that she's got high security clearance um so he opens it up he looks at this id he sort of looks up at her sort of in shock and she says to him do you want to see the man in your photos? Now, mm. this is referencing a series of photographs that Strangers has kept in his possession um, from a photographer 
by the name of August C. Roberts, um, who sent him, knowing that Stranges was an author and a keen ufologist or ufologist, mm -hmm. sends him these pictures and explains of this encounter. Now, this is another one which I'll come on to uh, next. But but this is how he's, he's basically in these photographs. It's sorry, it's believed that it's um, Valiant Thor at a similar conference um, as in New York, uh, Highbridge, right. New, York, uh, New, jo uh, New Jersey, New Jersey, sorry, New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he carries these pictures around with him because, as far as the photographer and strangers is concerned, it's photographic evidence of Valiant Thor an alien visitor so he keeps them so on his proof of the man it's proof of the man so he, he keeps and, them on uh, his and anyone book. that's actually you know part of the the socials or anything like that um we actually ended up inadvertently po posting pictures of that of this this valiant thor yes. in our um injured cold yes yeah we did uh posts and such which yeah, uh, did. at first i didn't even realize no. we'd done didn't make it i didn't know um, it was him at the time until we researched this so and it was like yeah. hang on a second oh ooh, we made a bit of a boo-boo there but synchronicity you can go on there as soon as you search for valiant thor it's the same picture the pictures, that will come up it's those pictures that will come up and you will see yeah. it's very it's it's one person that comes up yeah it's the same yeah i mean there there is one singular photo of another individual who does mm. look different, who is claimed to be Valiant Thor, but that has already been widely debunked. So we've That's not right. referenced That's that. It's completely different face, different jawline, oh, different coloured entirely hair. Entirely different age. The whole shebang. Like, yeah. Um, but so, yeah, so, so she says to him, do you want to see the guy in your photographs, uh, you know, referencing Valiant Thor? Um, he, he basically, obviously, strangers jumps at the chance and, and, and says yes. Um, and she says, okay, meet me outside your, um, hotel room tomorrow morning at 8am, uh, which, you know, which obviously, you know, he, he does, um, he stands outside keenly, at, you know, outside his, his hotel room. Um, she, she picks him up and they drive, you know, the, the short distance, uh, back over to the, uh, the Pentagon. Now, she confirms in the car that she was sent to the conference by Valiant Thor to specifically retrieve Dr. Strange's because Valiant Thor had become familiar with his works, um, knew that he was yeah. a man of God, and, and yeah, as we said earlier, held him in high esteem in terms of being the perfect candidate to, you know, help spread, help spread his, his word. Um, she does ask him the odd question of, it's, I think something along the lines of can you follow instructions? Yes, it can you follow instructions and to the word? To the word, yeah. To which obviously Stranger mm. says, Well, yeah, I can. Um, and he notices something is up. Now, this means nothing to me because I've never been to the Pentagon, but apparently there's two ways in which you can drive the, the approach, isn't it? Where you approach the Pentagon. There's the, there's one way where you drive to the right, and that's for normal traffic and civilians and everyone else but then there's a route that you take round to the left which takes you i guess directly into the pentagon now he gets mm. quite panicked when he um when he when they drive round to the left and that's when he suspects that something's not quite as he thought mm. because he knew that's not the way that most people would go um, well, yeah i mean i don't know if, yeah, i don't know if that's just because we're on the other side of the pond, we've never really heard of that. We've never taken any notice of it or anything. Yeah. Like that. But if there is anyone out there that you know has looked into UFO com or a part of the UFO community, could they maybe confirm that for us? Yeah, you or know, even get just, on the if socials, just if you've been to the Pentagon, if you've been to Arlington, and if you know that that route, yeah, we'd love to know kind of how those routes are defined, or even if they are, are they even defined. I guess. Um, so. Yeah, I suppose one, I, I, I know I referenced it earlier, but just quickly, the obviously the ID we mentioned was her own. Um, mm. But again, it's another, her actual identity was withheld and she was given the pseudonym Nancy Warren. Now, sure. this, other, this podcast that I referenced earlier that I listened to did do a bit of diving into that, where they tried to find any reference to a Pentagon employee by that name and couldn't find anything. But then, you know, to sort of his credit, if you like, Strangers does confirm in the book that it was a pseudonym given to her because he didn't want to 
name and shamer basically so you wouldn't find anything under nancy warren which is why yeah. i didn't dive into it you know myself um go on mate sorry was you gonna no 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 no. i was just i was agreeing with you all right okay cool um so yeah so they this is where it gets a bit iffy for me uh for the most part, but she, they, so they, they approached the Pentagon much in the same way as Valiant Thor did with the two officers. They're met by secret service agents and it, uh, in the car, sorry, in, in the, in the approach, she says to him, um, cause I think he asks her, well, how am I going to get in? And she says, don't worry about that. When they look at you or when you walk past them, pretend to flash them an ID. So sort of fra- flash the no, l- l- your jacket. L- yeah flash yeah. the lapel of your jacket as though you're showing them an ID, but but sort of do it quickly. Don't worry about the rest of it. I've got it covered. Um, so true, true, true to her word, they, they get out of the car, they approach the Secret Service agents. She flashes her actual ID. She walks straight in. Strangers does the same, uh, does as, as he was told, he flashes his lapel. They look at him and they, they let him straight in. No they questions asked. Through. No, conf- no confirmation, no searches, nothing. Just walk straight through um, into the into the Pentagon. Um, now they go to a uh, different level of the Pentagon uh, to what we have discussed before. This is obviously where there's like a living quarters, um, and so they they go up to they go up to the the room of um, Val's apartment, and that's where the introduction first happens between dr frank stranges and valiant thor which uh then you know obviously leads us on to knowing how about this initial encounter how thor came to um you know how thor came to uh to earth um and basically what strange's involvement was and why he was required by valiant thor um so that that i thought was quite interesting to kind of cover for 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 everyone um yeah no, I suppose, um, I suppose just quickly, I guess, um, just to go back to the reference that we made about the photographs um, that uh, that he received by um, August C. Roberts. Um, this occurred in April um, 57. That's right. Um, yeah, it was April. Reportedly, anyway, in, in April of 1957, <laughs> <laughs> so a month after Valiant Thor lands on Earth, he is invited to a UFO conference. Uh, it's in the back garden of a man named Howard Menger, uh, whose property was in Highbridge, New Jersey. Um, now, you know, those backyard UFO conferences. You yeah, know, we've all been to them. It's uh, yeah, they standard. prop up, don't they? Yeah, exactly. Everywhere. <laughs> Widely you, organized. You can't walk two feet without someone having a UFO conference in their garden. It's an, it's an absolute <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> um, it's worth noting, I, I guess, just for again for, for sort of some sort of context that Howard Menger was also one of the first uh, kind of main publicized contactees. He's a um, lifelong contactee, isn't he's he? Like, he's a lifelong contactee, but he was also one of the first following the Roswell fallout. Um, he was one of the main the main people from that. Uh, well, to, yeah, that's uh, when his story really started coming yeah, out. Yeah, that claimed to have um, yeah, been abducted. Not to go too and, far into, into Menga, but he started getting um, like contactee experiences from the age of 10. And it's mm. it's also worth mentioning as well that he had contacts with what he called Venusians. So people from he did Venus. prior he did have prior dealings with yeah who he would class as uh, most of his I think his, most of his yeah. his his contacts were Venusians he might have contact been contacted they, by other I think they were alien beings specifically from uh, from there yeah but yeah but that he this all came out after the Valiant Thor stuff that he'd been having it from you know the age of ten and whatever but his initial um, popularity if you like stemmed from the Roswell fallout and he was one of those main um one of those main contactees um so so yes yeah, so, so Howard Manger is uh, Menger sorry is holding this uh, UFO conference and as we've said um you know among the guests were Valiant Thor um but not only that um his wife Jill uh, and his brother Don were also in attendance 
so Don Thor and supposed, I guess, to be Jill Thor, Jill. I suppose. I guess so, yeah. Um, now, he, yeah, so the, the infamous photo, which again we'll share on the socials after the episode goes live, um, is where this is where it was taken. It was at this conference. It was by August C. Uh, Roberts. Um, and that's how it uh, comes into Strange's possession. Um, because Menja knows that he's a, a, an active um, UFO explorer. Uh, he talks about them, obviously, a lot. He's written books uh, and also been a man of faith as well. Um, and so that's how, yeah, and so that's how they come into his possession. Just to give a bit of backstory and a bit of context for those, because obviously we yeah. just kind of skimmed over it in the last encounter, but I thought it was worth going back just to give, um, yeah, just to give that bright, brief sort of uh, explanation. Um, yeah. And so that kind of brings us really to the end of the the sort of the main segment where we obviously introduce Valiant Thor and how he came to Earth and and how Doctor Strange gets involved and it, obviously it's his encounter that we're yeah. referencing as he's really the one and only source of you know kind of this story um, you know for the he's got some collaborators who we find out later down the line sort of tries to corroborate his story uh, which again we can come on to later but yeah. But yeah, that for the most it's part worth, is the yeah. It's definitely worth maybe getting Thor into exactly who Valiant Thor is. Yeah, because absolutely. I don't know about you, but I've, I mean, when we've looked at or watched other podcasts or listened to other podcasts and uh, various YouTube videos, which is always a good yeah. place to start, people. Always absolutely. a good place. Absolutely. Um, and never really go into who exactly Valiant Thor is. Um, no, and you're especially right. as per Doctor Strange's. Um, yeah, and there's it's probably a very good reason for it. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and I mean, this is where this is where this story is phenomenal this right? is where it's, it implodes in on itself i think so and my it promises goes, that i gave in the intro are about to come true they <laughs> absolutely are yeah it's yeah. it's an incredible incredible story and oh, it's fantastic it, yeah you know what if we lose some of you right now i wouldn't blame you i really yeah, wouldn't but 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 stick around because it is an absolute doozy it's and fantastic. You'll love it. Yeah, it so is good. It turns out that Valiant Thor is the commander of not just Victor One, so the ship that landed in Alexandria. Yeah. But he is also the chairman of the Central Control, which is the council body that sits on the planet Venus. Now, right, okay. This was this was something that um, it it turns out that he actually he acquired. Um, so he started off as well. First of all, he wasn't born. He wasn't born. He wasn't born. Valiant no, wasn't that's born. right. He no. was created. And he was yep. created by the power of the almighty God. That he was. He was he was created. He was yeah. he's not a he's not a being in the same way that you and I are. I mean, for instance, he don't even have a belly button. He don't have no navel. No, that's <laughs> that's right. That was one of the <laughs> yeah, aside of aside from one, I think one other part of his anatomy that was described by strangers his navel yeah. was the only other one or, or lack of uh navel was the only thing that was um mentioned was very... his create didn't his creation precede that of adam and eve it did it, yeah. It, it, yeah because that's um, that's exactly it yeah. he apparently witnessed the um creation and destruction of what he called the quello now Okay. From what I can gather, I don't know if you've got the same thing, but from what mm -hmm. I can gather, is the Quello were a civilization that existed before the current age of man. Um, yeah, basically, yeah. And um, with him seeing the creation of this age of man, yeah. he took a lot, he took a great interest in it. Now, I don't know whether or not that means literally. I don't know that we we the, the moment that we evolved from apes and went forward or. Mm. I don't yeah. know. This is this is what this is what's given in the book that he saw our mm. creation and was interested. So this guy yeah. outdates all of us. All of us. Yeah. All of us. Eve He's outdates around a bit. Adam. He, yeah, yeah, he exactly. outdates Adam and Eve. Yeah. Um, and at this point, because he took an interest in the creation of man, he became um, what is known on Venus is an instructor. Now that's probably yeah. like university level professor, basically in yeah, comparison. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, the the only thing I found to go with that is that yeah, he's 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 essentially his job role was as a researcher, I guess mm. would be the same sort of thing. Yeah, 
a yeah. researcher, almost. Te- a teacher. Kind of like injured cold, yeah. like a searcher. Pretty much like a searcher. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah, don't know. Absolutely. Don't yeah. Know. But yeah, he so he took this um, this instructor role and he taught the mysteries of the universe to the youth on Venus. Yeah. Um, now, the, on Venus in itself, it seems like they've got very much a very good population control. And um, anyone that has got any sort of interest in science or astronomy will know that the 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 surface of venus is inhospitable it rains sulfuric mm. acid and it snows metal yeah which i mean that's no one's going to bloody well survive that so no it's all right though but we've got that covered because it comes yeah. from within the venus they, they, they're subterranean yeah they are. They come from within venus so we've got that yeah. covered people right so yeah. don't don't start debunking panic it yet. not yeah panic not. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've got an answer for that one <laughs> well he over this over these thousands and thousands of years that he's watching humanity grow yeah. um he enjoys his position as an instructor but he longs for something more yeah and he longs to become a starship commander absolutely all right, so not only is this guy being created, he's not even born, he's been created. And uh, to talk about the, you, you mentioned it before about his name, Thor. Yeah. Um, he was just known as Valiant. He just had one name, you know, like that's like right. Prince yeah, yeah, or the artist, right. you yeah. know, he was, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and then he attaches himself. So the, the way it works yeah. on Venus apparently is you, those that are created with just one name, they yeah. then attach themselves to a family that shares the ideas and the love for spreading the word of God. Now that's important. That's important indeed. Absolutely, They've got to spread yeah. the word of God. Absolutely. So, you know, when we, when we spoke about earlier where um, each planet or each mm. solar system has a book. That's right. Yeah. And strangers doesn't actually ask him. So that we, you know, you reference the Bible a lot in our speak in our in our talks and whatnot. Do you have a Bible on, on your planet? And he goes, one does not need the Bible mm. when they are in close contact with his author. <laughs> yeah like i thought it was a good get well, out. okay then yeah that yeah. is a pretty good get out i do pretty i, good I, get I out. did like get a jail one. free card yeah but i thought okay yeah. fair enough yeah well Proper. played well played so, <laughs> it's very good you know I'll, I'll I think he's one. got a good poker <laughs> face and all <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> um exactly. so it works so it seems like as he's longing for this position of starship commander he 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 wants that position so he can go to earth he can go and interact with the man that's on yes. with man that's on earth exactly yeah. and he comes about this this position in quite a dramatic sense mm. yeah. right? so this is the story of how he is able to get to that position so he's currently walking alongside a uh, water lake underneath the planet of underneath the surface of the planet of venus yeah. and it's quite beautiful it's quite crystalline mm. and from the center of the lake a spout of fire shoots up and from that fire then a hand then protrudes from the water right. and as he's standing there motionless the fire comes along it touches his lip yeah and then he's given a prophecy so he hears a booming voice and it says valiant you have been created for a divine purpose your lips will speak words of wisdom, understanding and knowledge to the people of the far away planet. <laughs> First of all, it ain't that far away, mate. It's next door. Exactly. Yeah. Let your heart be filled with expectation that very soon you will be sent to accomplish the most important task for which you have been prepared. <sighs> and in the power of the father flooded his soul. Yeah. Which so, naturally it would, obviously, from that type of message. Yeah. That's do you know what do you know what came to mind when I read that? <laughs> Go on. Do you remember when the National Lottery first came came along and it had that great big hand that came out of the out the sky and went, It's, it's you. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you have <laughs> been you chosen. <laughs> <laughs> so this, you know, it, it was like, wow, this is this is incredible. I'm feeling you know, I'm 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 feeling the almighty i'm feeling the holy spirit right now yeah and he he, he sits and he he meditates on this and he prayers upon it as well and he mm. tries to get his head around exactly what he has been being prophesized yeah and it, at a special time of worship and praise that rose his consciousness to a higher point than it had ever been before wow valiant thor 
comes face to face with Jesus Christ. Good wow. old JC himself. JC himself. JC himself. Wow. So let's bear it in mind, right? Let's let's get to this. Thor, a uh, valiant Thor, is older than Jesus Christ on Earth at the very least. Yeah, on, yeah, technically, yeah. On yeah. Earth at the very least, yeah, but yeah. it seems like um, Jesus Christ is uh, also a Venusian. He also comes from Venus. Yeah, but he exists on a plane that none of us seem to. Exactly. Um, right, yeah. And upon this time, when he's currently in the temple and jesus christ comes to him a flame of fire filled the temple and small tongues of fire sat upon everyone in attendance and then the master i'm guessing who is good old jc mm. summoned val to the platform and a special robe of power and authority was placed upon his shoulders jc placed his divine hand upon val's head Sorry, 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 sorry. I got, I got. To bring yourself back. Away I'm, going, there, didn't you? I'm going a bit Kenneth Copeland. Sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I'm only human. <laughs> I'm only human, and it will come out. So I will, will apologise now. Again, so yeah. if we do have any evangelists that are listening, yeah, we apologise now. <laughs> please, yeah. This isn't directed at you. This is directed yeah. at our good old Copeland. Yeah. Okay. So please don't take any offence. <laughs> so he places his, his divine hand upon Val's head and <laughs> the blessing was pronounced upon him. And everyone, wow. I mean, everyone in the, in, the, in the temple, they fell around in adoration. And which, Yeah, I mean, which is a fair, fair enough reaction, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you, you, you'd fall You'd have out, to, like, wouldn't you, really? I mean, yeah. Well, I can imagine. He is the Messiah. He is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> He's not that messiah. The, He's a very the lord of fire. destiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and at this at this moment, um, Val and Jesus Christ they have a little private moment with one another, and this is when uh, Jesus Christ then gives Val a gift that he needs to gift also to the people of Earth. Yeah, and that is the ceremony of fire. Now, ah. the ceremony of fire, right? Okay. Now, this is what you need to do with regards to the ceremony of fire. So he does actually. He, he takes this and he gives it to um, gives it to strangers as well, and like it says, this is what you need to spread among humanity. This is what we yeah. need. We need you to raise the the word of God to the point at which yeah. that he then bestows bestows all of his love and and power yeah. upon you. to the point where it can't be denied. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there are six, six again uh, points that you need to do to um, basically see through this ceremony of fire, this ring of fire right. ceremony. Okay. So the first is to place a lighted candle before you on a table or other flat surface. Be careful to place a dish under so you don't, you know, let any drips yeah. get on the table. Makes sense because um, yeah. that's important. Um, now this one's very, very important. Okay. Number two, under no circumstances should you permit anyone or anything to interrupt you while you're performing this ceremony. Okay, remember that. Then Did three, you know? recite the Lord's Prayer. Naturally, um, it doesn't say whether or not it's the which Lord's Prayer because there one? seems to be a few of them. Yeah. Um, so much so there was wars over it. Uh, wars over it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pray the following prayer without doubt in your heart. Believe that God of creation is hearing you at this very moment and that you are praying. Keep your eyes open as you pray. Lift in your, <laughs> lift in your outstretched hand heavenward. Look into the flame and maintain your full senses. Know what you are doing at all times and repeat aloud. Now, this is where Copeland's going to come out, mate. I can't help it. It's just going to happen. Fair warning. Eternal Father creator of the universe here this day my petition surround me now with your divine ring of fire <laughs> the fire of protection the fire of your abundance the fire of complete healing the fire of divine abundance now i command the hand of almighty god on my behalf let it be so in this very moment in the blessed name of our lord jesus christ amen so that's step four, people. Right? <laughs> that's just the fourth one, yeah. That's that's step four. <laughs> step five. 
place all your heartfelt desires as well as your problems into the flame. Okay. Yeah. And then six, extinguish the candle, remain there for three minutes and feel the presence of the ring of fire. Wow. Okay. Right. Now, let's just... A little side note here, you know, Strange does later go on to say, you can perform this prayer or ceremony anywhere, anytime, yeah. even while driving your car. Convenient. Nick, yeah. Well, I'm, I don't know about you, mate, but I ain't lighting no fucking candles in my car. No, not the way I drive, no. And putting my hands in the air. End up torturing <laughs> me, I'll end up torturing myself or killing myself, one of the two. Mate, you'd be meeting, you'd be meeting your maker pretty soon if you did that. Pretty sharpish, to be fair. Yeah. You, wouldn't know, yeah. you wouldn't need no ring of fire to do that, mate, that's for sure. <laughs> well, you'd have one if you set a fire in your car. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, uh, oh, mate, it just absolutely cracks me up. This is what we, this is what we mean, yeah. but we had no idea it was going to no, go down this it's, route yeah it was almost like um it, it was almost like one of those things where you have a compelling or at least slightly believable story and then you just you don't shut up you just <laughs> you, you keep going and you keep going until you've talked yourself yep. into a hole and there's just all this i mean i mean, I mean this isn't even just this is just the start of it but there's just so much fantastical you know, sort of information that that comes I mean, that's, from that's, this. That, that, that what I've just stated there. That is pretty much the story of Valiant Thor. That who he is, basically his origin is, story. Yeah, that is it. Which there's no way know. we could have started with that, like we have done in previous oh, episodes. No. Because no, we had to drag you in for a good hour or so. Yeah, we had to get you hooked first before we <laughs> hit you with that. Because before we drop that in your laps, <laughs> we would have. Yeah, we would have lost everyone within the first ten minutes. I think otherwise. <laughs> um but no i mean that yeah that's when it it i mean yeah like i say this is just the start of the fantastical part of the uh you know of the, of the you know of the, the story really um i mean certainly you know fun to read and you know th oh, there yeah. are you know there are elements um it is very it is very as i, I mean you listen to the audio book and i did i, I read it i read the book and even as I was reading it, I couldn't help but keep going into the Copeland voice. You know, that's how much that's how much evangelist stuff. To be is fair, in there. I didn't until you shared it earlier on today. But <laughs> I've now not been able to get him or at least his voice out of my out of my head. And even before we started recording, when we were talking about it, the amount of times that Copeland came into you know the the conversation just with his you know his passionate you know preaching. Um, I mean, man, it, if, it, if, it's, demon, it definitely if demons are real, if demons are real, that man is possessed. Exactly. Yeah. He's, he ain't right. I mean, he ain't yeah. right. No, exactly. I mean, Strangers wasn't, you know, wasn't on that same scale. Oh, no, he weren't on that level, um, was he? No. Yeah, he but wasn't he on. Was, uh, he was an evangelist uh, preacher as well, you know, so it's, it was, um, it's, it's worth noting that in in the book there is a lot of this thought that valiant thought is here to spread the word of god and that the word of god is the yeah. truth it's the truth think, that we all need to see that's the truth we all need to experience i mean when and it, yeah it's kind of where we both kind of dropped out a little bit on that wasn't it, it was because it then started to become quite apparent maybe it should have kicked in sooner i don't know but for me that's when it starts to kick in that this was very convenient it was you know it was a guy who is an author mm. and we, we knew that before this encounter you know he was a published author he was a ufo enthusiast um and he was also you know for the most part you know a man of god he did not only ufo conferences but he'd done you know sermons he had, he had religious uh you know he did um you know religious talks and and conferences and, and whatever so he was he was kind of kind of creeping into the kind of ken copeland kind of manifestation but nowhere near that same mm. level but that's certainly the vibe that i started to get from him when it started to get into the more fantastical um and uh, and i guess kind of religious um you know element you know to yeah. it uh, and, it, and it's not because of the introduction of the you know the religious part not by any means but it, it it's just the way that the two kind of tie in together just seemed all, a little too convenient with yeah he was sought I mean, he was sought after by a valiant thor to project this you know message 
you know, but it's only at that point, you know, at first his intentions are, you know, prevent nuclear war, cure disease and stop, you know, famine and poverty. Yeah. And that, when that doesn't work, he thinks, oh, stuff it. I'll get a, I'll get a civilian and we'll start preaching the name of God. Cause I forgot that thousands of years ago, I actually, I actually met his son, you know, Jesus Christ. So maybe we'll yeah. go down that route. And, it, and so I, I don't know whether that's just where, Strange's um, kind of made himself relevant to the the story and the encounter by giving it that that twist and you know and kind of that well, the, the element. book flip flops all over the place. It does. It it kind of it kind of right now. This is just it. I don't want you guys to think that we're just going to look to tear into Strange's or anything like that. But know, for instance, not, no. there's he and I understand it to a certain degree, but there's no description as to what Valiant Thor looks like. Which I thought was odd, but then no. there's all these pictures that are supposedly valiant for there's out there. These photographs, that have got, but um, I mean, there is one description um, that he does give. Or it certainly reads it out in the in the audio. Um, I'll just um, yeah, because we realised that in the audio there was certain parts, certain content that wasn't covered in just the book. Yeah, it's almost like there was like a, an additional parts to it, but. Well, I know there was a second your... edition. So whether I've listened mm -hmm. to the audio of the second edition and you've read the original, you know, the it's original publication, I, I don't know. But yeah, but yeah, there was a description of salts, but it was nothing like what we had on, you know, say injured cold or you know, no. even sort of the Mothman. It was basically just. Um, but I suppose that's because there are pictures supposedly of Val that were out there. So I guess the description wasn't needed, I suppose, but. <laughs> Yeah, so I suppose that's, that's not a bad that's not a bad point, I but, guess. Yeah, I mean, what the, the point I want to kind of make about the book God, is it does yeah, go so. on about it goes um, into all the very very much evangelistic sort of language, like like what I just uh, you oh, performed yeah. for you just now, um, <laughs> and then goes into other details, which, um, like for instance, this I think now is the right time to talk about the space blow drying toilet oh jesus yeah of it, okay. it yep yeah. it is it is time it is yeah. time All right, so okay. this is a point in time where <laughs> underneath the, <laughs> the 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 chapter title of advanced technology yeah it talked about you know going onto the ship and uh seeing the quarters that val has laid out for him um and uh nature calls i think this is so, sorry, just to cut in i think this is Go also on. when this is also when they leave. Um, they leave Virginia, and doesn't he park the ship under a under a invisibility cloak or something un, right. uh, at Lake Mead in Las Vegas? That's right. Yeah. Is that the, yeah they so move... he's in, they're in Las Vegas at this yeah. point. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, so he go. They go on the ship to show him about a little bit, and uh, then nature calls. So he uh, as he goes in there, he's um, <laughs> he's turtle in. You know, it seems like that's what that's the yeah that's the uh, the, the gist that I'm getting from it. And then um, yeah. as he's as he sits, he's uh, he kisses his lips upon the seat. Mm. He uh, he notices there's no toilet paper about. And then, right. and this is this is what it actually says in the book. He goes, "I went I went to the bathroom and was embarrassed to note the obvious absence of toilet tissue. Then it happened." that <laughs> <laughs> it was so basically he's saying the world fell out of his arsehole <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The galaxy dropped out his backside yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and then he heard a voice and he said in, in in his head so val's now talking to him mind to mind through walls now yeah. but frank look to your right you'll find three buttons push the first then the second and then the third in that order okay that's pretty you know good pretty standard you know, yeah, pretty standard uh, instructions right there. And he, um, and he could have left it. This is the bit that made me laugh. Is that strange? Is at this point, could have left it there. Could have. You don't need to know. He doesn't. You don't he need doesn't. to know anymore. But you get goodness, to hear it all, people. You he get didn't. to hear it all, <laughs> and you get to hear it for free. So thank you. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> you are you're welcome. welcome. Yeah, all part so, of the service. <laughs> <laughs> as I as I proceeded to press the first button, the sensation. That was of a rapid, warm wind, similar to a jet of air, blowing beneath the seat. The process entirely crystallised the waste matters and caused it to drop from me. 
<laughs> this is unbelievable, yeah. He got to try and shift uh, his arms, mate. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Then the second button was another jet blast of a different pressure and temperature. Doesn't say whether it's cold or cold or hot warm yeah. or anything like that, you know, or or harder or, or softer or, what, or whatever. Yeah. And then finally, the third button to produce a pleasant, fragrant substance that made me feel as though I had been washed, cleaned, powdered, and perfumed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, right. that is fan- that is fantastic, isn't it? We That's need important. that sort of tech here. That's forget, what, uh, yeah. Forget disarming nuclear. Yeah, don't worry about that. that. We yeah. want the space toilet. I'll That's take two. Want. <laughs> I want the space carsy. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll take two. Yeah, yeah I won't ever. I'll, you know what? I could have done with that at the beginning of lockdown. When there's no bloody toilet paper anywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. This time last year, I could have done with that. <laughs> we, this time last year, we would have been millionaires. <laughs> we would have been millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, cheers, oh, cheers, Val. Thanks for that, mate. It, yeah, monetary oh, gain man. and all that. But oh, yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about, people. Like we got, it, we got yeah. incredible details like that, and then there's other stuff like where he just said, "Yeah, all I had to do was visualize uh, I had a pass on my lapel, and uh, they let me right through." Yeah, exactly. I uh-huh. mean, it's just it. Yeah, it's boggling. It, yeah, I mean, where I mean, where do you go from there? It's nuts. I mean, that that's sort of on the more fantastical um you know sort of side of it um which we we, this is where i think as we said earlier it kind of lost the pair of us Mm. um sort of for the most part like like i say i think up until up until he leaves the pentagon uh that i i was pretty hooked and i sort of thought you know this is quite compelling his name dropped some pretty you know big figures in you know us and world history you know there's enough detail in there to make it plausible, but not too much that you start questioning kind of certain points, you know, to, yeah. an, ex- to an extent. I mean, that th- there was, a, there was those points, um, you know, that I did mention um, earlier as we were going through it um, that I'd sort of asterisk as we, as we went through um, most of the, the first one being the, the Sergeant, you know, there's that Sergeant young who, that's it. For what I can see, didn't actually exist. Now, whether he's just given this officer that name again as another pseudonym, I don't know. But at, at no point in the audio book, at least, does Strange's detail that Thor got their names. He introduced himself, yeah. and gave them his name, but he never in turn asked for theirs. And you'd think if someone's coming to a new planet, trying to kind of keep it peaceful and whatever, going through the standard pleasantries, you would have thought that asking them for their name, especially if you can see them quite nervy, would have been a and also sort bear of an in mind as well. Supposedly, Val is supposed to have an IQ of something ridiculous, like twelve hundred. Twelve hundred, you or know. Something, yeah. So he would have, you know, if he was told what their names were, photographic memory. I mean, he would have remembered it. Yeah, exactly. Average, yeah. average human IQ is a hundred. So if you look at like 140 12 you're, times you're genius, you've smarter, got photographic yeah. memory. So if this guy's yeah. got like yeah. an IQ of 1200, mate, that's well, yeah. I mean, that's beyond measurement, let's be honest. Yeah, but, exactly. You wouldn't even be able to fathom what intelligence and no and no point really in the so. book does he say because well, I've read plenty of, of stories from contactees who have protected other people's names, you know, from the mob and such. Yeah. And they say that. They say yeah. the names that I've chosen are not their real names to protect mm. them at no point does it say that at all it doesn't about the, the officers i mean he, he does in fairness about said so nancy warren for example the pentagon employee oh yeah sorry yeah who he meets he does say he does say there that he's deliberately given this name as a pseudonym to protect her identity which again going back to what i said earlier seems fairly redundant at that point because he's already name dropped richard nixon um dwight eisenhower, eisenhower. And yeah. the Secretary of, of State, although again, he that was another name, detail. He, just, he doesn't actually name title. who the state is. He just names the title, which, which again, if you've gone to the trouble of saying that you met this figurehead and that figurehead, why would you not mention, you know, that name? I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to say like I'm being pedantic it, because out of all the details that he does put in there, for this to be the one that jumps out, you know, even even as I was going through it, it did feel a bit. 
you know, it did feel a bit odd as that was the thing to point out. But I just thought with there being so much detail, especially when it takes a, a, a bloody 180 degree turn. Yeah. Um, and gives us all just the like that as well. Yeah, exactly. It gives us all the fantastical spaceship stuff to the point where he details taking a dump on the spaceship. You, you would have thought that he would remember the name or be able to recall the name of the two officers that Valiant Thor met. So I thought that was a bit wishy-washy for want of a better phrase. Yeah. And yeah, as I say, there was the fact that he didn't name who the Secretary of State was, um, which again, I thought would have been quite an important um, detail. Um, I mean, it's not even like he would do it to protect his identity because like I say, he's named, he's already named the president and the vice president. Yeah. Um, the other thing being as well is that he elaborately describes the train being under the Pentagon that takes them straight to the White House. Now, again, I've done my research. There was that podcast I listened to who'd done their research. Yeah. And nowhere could we find, I don't know, you've done yours as well. And, and nowhere could I find anything compelling enough to confirm that such a train existed. Mm. I mean, I'm sure there'd be underground tunnels. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a like you know, I said before, it's source. a rumor that's been darting about for a very very long time that there's exactly, a yeah. a train line that goes directly to and from the Pentagon and, and the White House. Um, yeah, I mean, exactly. they have alluded to it in a couple of films as well, but as far yeah. as any of us laymen's know and that we're even exactly, going to be privy yeah. to, yeah, there exactly, is not yeah. one. There's yeah. just a rumor. Exactly. Um, right. but, the yeah. one thing I do want to say about about this particular book in itself is that now I guess I suppose even in this we haven't said it, but I guess we are getting off the fence in this in this sort of segment here, really, aren't we? I think we? probably more so in any other episode that we've done. Yeah, it's um, kind of come come around a little bit too quick. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I think I think you might be right. Yeah, but yeah, but I think it, we're getting to that point. The point I want to make about this book is that it yeah. doesn't have any details with really any solid details as to who Valiant Thor is, what he's trying to achieve, especially when you bear in mind Valiant Thor supposedly has written over 30 books. You can he's actually purchase them. You he is very much on... an accomplished, a, yeah. an accomplished author, mate. He this is, is um, you can buy them on you know, Amazon. I've got a list of them right here. We've got yeah. um, the one that is most uh, commonly known, and it's he's co-authored it with Frank Strangers. And that's Outwit in Tomorrow: Secrets for Living from the Great Pyramid. Mm. So there's all these various different ones: uh, Venusian health magic, Venusian science secrets. Uh, etc etc art of ascension yeah. uh, sips of truth you know there's yeah i mean it, it does sound like a barnes and noble almost yeah um, they're all they're all very much <laughs> um geared towards the kind of self-help book mills and boone sorry not barnes and noble oh, oh, mills and boone. <laughs> <laughs> and boone. barnes yeah. and noble that's, that's actually like for anyone that doesn't know barnes and noble is uh kind of like our um waterstones out yeah. in the states the actual, so yeah, yeah. mills and bone is what i meant to say mills and bone yeah yeah there's a lot of these titles sound like that it's like space porn there's, there's lady space porn <laughs> lady space porn yeah i mean there's certainly um yeah there's uh, certainly books plenty of books actually probably more so i think written by valiant thor than there were yeah from but strangers there's a lot, actually there's a lot that he's co-authored with frank strangers yes now this is uh, a lot of it I, I don't if we don't have much in the way of details with regards to who Valiant Thor is now if he's this much no. of a prolific writer surely we should have something to actually work off of surely this guy must we especially in this book in this Stranger at the Pentagon book yeah if strength if if Strangers is in contact with Val as much as he has said that he's been yeah then surely we should have a hell of a lot more to go off than he's from Venus. He was created. Yeah, exactly. He's he's really old. We should also have more up to date images of Valiant mm. Thor than just the two or three taken by um, August Roberts um, back in like fifty seven or or something like that. But that 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 was another thing. That I've that I found, I know you watched it recently as well, Scott. That that kind of helped to kind of debunk that story. We, I mean, we had our suspicions anyway, but mm -hmm. someone um, uh, on the Alien Society um, YouTube channel 
um, did do a bit of an investigation into those images taken at That's the right. UFO conference in the back garden of Howard Menger. Um, where, as I said earlier, it was reported to have um, occurred in April of 57. Uh, so it was a month after Van Thor landed on Earth. Um, however, from this investigation and, and sort of from my research, Howard Menger actually sold his property months before April 57. So there's no way he could have held that conference when these photos were reportedly uh, taken. Supposedly taken, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, this is the most compelling bit, I think. But in one of the images, you can clearly see, um, you know, who they believe is Valiant Thor holding a notepad and pen and also a Sunday newspaper. Now, obviously, it's an American newspaper. Mm. And the people that are looking into it uh, have zoomed in on this paper to see if they can read kind of the date from it or any kind of telling information. The only thing they could vaguely make out on the, the newspaper was the numbers 33-7. Now, thankfully, the guys that researched it are American because I wouldn't have known this. But on the segment of newspaper that they could see, when numbers are shown in that formation, it almost certainly refers to a sports score. Yeah, more specifically, uh, an American sports, uh, American, American sports uh, score, football. Yeah. Yeah, American football sports. Yeah, that specifically. Yeah. So what they did was they searched not just um, American football, but they searched all sporting events in the year 1957 when the pictures were supposedly taken. And there wasn't a single sporting event that ended in that score, whether it be hockey, American football, whatever. There was no sporting event that ended in that score. However, yeah. in 1956, there was. So uh four months prior to the pictures being taken and also three months before Valiant Thor supposedly came to Earth there was a game on the 18th of November 1956 between the New York Giants and the Washington uh, Redskins and uh that's um and so that's yeah so that that's and that almost... was uh, that was the the score where the New Jersey um Giants they, the Giants they lost, lost. Didn't they? Yeah, the Giants, Giants lost. Yeah, they did. Yeah, you're right. Um, and yes, yeah, so there was nothing in 57. That is the only... And so, again, they searched the entire year. Any sporting event in the States, that was the only game that ended in, in that score. In that score. And so that almost certainly confirms that the photos were, in fact, taken on the... Uh, well, around. Well, it the, would have been in the November of of fifty six, yeah, wouldn't it? it? Would have been rather yeah, the than November it being in, in the April of fifty seven. Is that where so, both strangers and the photographer uh, Roberts? Yeah, August um, C. Roberts. Yeah, yeah. They they say that. Well, no, it was taken a couple of weeks after um, mm. Val it's, landed. Um, yeah, well, exactly. It's actually yes. Yeah, so the photos were actually taken. Um, four months before Valiant Thor even came to Earth. Um, uh, also, one of the other, I've referenced earlier, that aside from having no navel, there was one other sort of body part that Strangers oh, describes. Yeah, right. He claims that um, Venusians, so not, not just Valiant Thor, have six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. Now, if you look at these photographs um, that Strangers religiously carried around with him, you can clearly see that the gentleman pictured, who's supposedly Valiant Thor, has got five fingers. It's a normal it's, it's got five human digits on hand. his hands. Yeah, normal human hands. Both hands, in fact. On, on both as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, that was that's probably one of the most, I think, compelling kind of debunks on all of this. Um yeah. I, I can't largely I can't take credit for it. I mean, obviously I found it, but I didn't do the research. That was courtesy of uh like I say, the Alien Society on YouTube. Um, if anyone wants to jump on and, and we'll, yeah. well, we'll definitely be sharing it. Um, we'll share it on the Discord and we'll share it on uh, the other socials as well, so you yeah, guys can have a look at it and see what you think of it. Yeah, give us no, give no us problem. your uh, your take. Uh, see whether or yeah. not um, Alien Society, the the gentleman behind it, has actually put forward a very compelling yeah argument because Absolutely. not only that, but he also states um, that the guy pictured. Does yeah. exist, but Does his exist. name is not Valiant Thor. It's not. 
no. his name, <laughs> the man in the picture. Yeah. Drum roll. <laughs> Frank Strangers. It is. It is almost certainly believed to be none other than Frank Strangers it himself is, in his younger years. It year. is. It is I, Frank yeah, Strangers. I am almost it certain is. that it is because what this guy does, and again, we'll share the link in the socials, but he manages to find a yearbook photo of um, of, uh, of Frank Strangers. A very young um, Frank Strangers. Very young and thin um, Frank Strangers. It's a, it's a college one as well. So it's, it's not it's a high a school college. yearbook. It's a, yeah, it's a college, college yearbook. yearbook. And uh, it's, yeah, it was when he was doing one of his uh, religious uh, diploma studies, I believe. Um, and yeah, so he basically finds this yearbook photo and he holds it up on one side of the screen and then he holds up on the other side the infamous uh, Valiant Four photo and it's, it's, the, the, same it's the same guy. It is the same guy. You can, the, the, how the ears look, how they're positioned, the hairline, just, just everything. You, you look at it and you think that's strangers. Now, conveniently, the book along with these photos didn't come out until... I think it was uh, 10 years later. So That's from right. so the photos were reportedly taken in 57. Strangers didn't actually publish them until 67. So that's a whole 10 years. Mm. And by that time, he'd gained a fair bit of weight. Um, and oh, also, yeah. I think it start, uh, his hair had started to go grey. So there was no way you could look at Strangers at the point of publication and those photos and match the, the two um, together. Uh, and obviously no. at, that, at that time without the, you know, the internet and stuff, there's no way anyone would have found the yearbook photo unless they were in the class, you know, with it. And it seems as well, it wasn't like uh, he hadn't gone to just any regular sort of college or university. He went to, um, it was a, a religious college. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, um, he was doing one of his... He was there to uh, study the scriptures. He was there to become a preacher, I did, um, basically. I had it written down. He went to... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, bah, bah, bah. So yeah, so he he done criminology, divinity, psychology, and the humanities, and he done he was doing diplomas in in all of those at various points. And so yeah, it was I think it was when he was doing the divinity diploma that this yearbook photo was taken. Um, but yeah, then yeah, as, as I say, it was ten years later that he actually published them in the book. At which point, yeah, he'd, his hair had changed from black to grey, and he'd also put on a. Um, noticeable amount put on of, a bit of timber didn't they put on a bit of timber bless him so um yeah so there was no <laughs> way anyone could look at the two at that point and be like hold on that's that's just you um yeah and it, yeah because the, the worst bit about it that i think mate the worst bit about it is i think it, the geese is just trying to he, he's tried to capitalize on a story or he's created a story um in order to make money he's to Which, make money, to, to get a bit of notoriety and he's kind of five minutes of fame. But I think also because he was, you know, he was, he was seemingly a, you know, a religious man. He was brought up um, Italian Catholic, although he did go to other churches. He didn't go to Catholic church, which I think mm -hmm. sent him on this path initially. Um, but I think it was to honestly use the, because at that point, you know, Roswell had, hadn't happened that long ago, maybe what, 10 years prior um, you know, you, you had some yeah. some of the early sci-fi and sort of alien films. Contactees were f coming out of the woodwork left, right and centre. So it was a very prominent time in pop culture mm. for UFOs, for aliens and and the belief in, in all of that kind of thing. So I think he was kind of using something that was popular to try and drive the word of something that is seemingly always under contention and not gotcha. so popular, which yeah. is religion. So he thought, well... I want to try and get my, you know, the word of, you know, Jesus out there. I want to try and get this message and get everyone kind of singing from my hymn sheet, no pun intended. And um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, there wasn't. And um, to uh, and to do that, you know, if these sermons and preaches and everything isn't working, why not try something that's popular at the moment? And so I think yeah, he that's, just tried. That's quite, that's quite a valid claim, that really, because people could argue that in the 50s, that's when... You know, people start, stopped really taking as like religion as much of a role in their life as it was before. I think that was certainly um, the start of it. And I think obviously things like Roswell certainly happened with that because we were seemingly also changing cultures as well. I mean, in the fifties, that's when influence. that's when the idea of the teenager started yeah. started cropping up. So culturally, yeah, 
the the church was becoming less relevant so yeah you know that's a fair that's a fairly good I explanation that, really as to why he yeah. could have why he would have made something like this up i think like um, with anything and also makes it makes you know it makes a good point with regards to how the 180 that the book does yeah you know it starts exactly. off factual the, it starts off like um a, a sci-fi movie and then suddenly you're in you're in an evangelist sermon yeah, all of a sudden exactly so it's so like what we've done with this episode we've we've, we've <laughs> he clawed you in with the the story the the compelling story the the alien from another world which was a hot topic at the moment he got you hooked and believing on in the hope that when he hits you with the evangelical fantastical kind of stuff at the end or towards the end by that point you're already invested and so any message that he wants to try and relay is going to is going to seep into you and you're going to, you know, sort of absorb it. Um, but funny enough, you mentioned that, you know, it reads like a, a UFO um, story because mm. again, I didn't make the correlation because I haven't seen one of these films in a very long time. Yeah. Basically the, st the story that we've just gone over with, with uh, Valiant Thor initially coming to earth is essentially um, a carbon copy of the plot to the 1951 film, The Day the Earth Stood Still. Mm. Now, at the time, I didn't make that correlation. It was only when I was listening to, the, again, this other uh, extraterrestrial podcast that they bring it up and then they go over the synopsis of the film. And then I was like, oh, yeah, no, actually, that is a, that is a, a direct that is pretty uh, much ripoff, it, yeah. pretty much. And then, but not only that, but then there's another film, less known film, that was released about three years later in 54 um called stranger from venus um which again is <laughs> is a, a direct copy of stranger at the pentagon now not only is there a, much. not only is there a, a similarity in the story there's actually a pretty close similarity in the titles of both stories um which you know which i think also kind of lends itself to the whole um you know sort of uh, debunking um really um so yeah, I mean, look, I, I, did, the, I suppose just to add a sort of a, uh, you know, a, a different side to the argument on that, I guess very quickly that there are, there are t two people that do kind of add weight to Strange's story. Uh, how much weight is up to us and the yeah. listeners to kind of decide? But the first one, which I think is possibly the most important out of the two, is the great granddaughter of president dwight d eisenhower lauren eisenhower confirms mm. that she was privy to a number of conversations with her great grandfather where he would relay the stories of being in close contact with extraterrestrials now she does although i've not seen anything from the horse's mouth per se um she does reportedly claim that uh that Eisen Dwight Eisenhower doesn't actually give the names of any of these extraterrestrials. So he doesn't name Valiant Thor, but he does say that around that time, so between 56 and 57, he was in close contact with various extraterrestrials for various reasons. Um, that's all I could really find. There wasn't, she, she did, she said she was, that that's all he mentioned kind of to her when she was privy to those conversations. That's she right, yeah. She didn't actually say, uh, yeah that he was mentioned by name this was the story i can definitely confirm that this happened but she has more or less confirmed that yeah he did talk with um with uh, with extraterrestrials so i, I yeah. think that kind of that i mean again i couldn't see anything from her specifically um no i heard a lot about i, I did read a lot about um, her name does crop up a lot yeah that, that, that from what i could gather from what I looked into was the only thing that she had really going for her with regards to her stories was her last name. Um, yeah, so there's that actually no evidence. She's, that there's she's no related. real evidence that she's been able to to bring forth to say yes, this happened. Yes, that happened. No, that didn't happen. Um, Not only to that, kind of set the record straight. It just seems like no. um, the only thing that she had going for her was was her last name. Yeah, because obviously off the back of that. Um, there isn't actually, from what again, from what I've seen, actually any evidence to support the fact that she was actually directly related to Dwight Eisenhower. 
it could just be a convenience of, um, as you say, surname. Um, you know, sort of for the for the most part. Um, so, yeah, and that's also the the other person as well that 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 you're alluding to is um, is a uh, Rear Admiral Bird's nephew. Yes, Harley Bird. Harley Bird. Yes, he. Um, now, I, I suppose it's worth mentioning that he's also got his controversies and his own, um, his own stories and his own claims. Now, I get. Now, he again. There's no. Um, again, with him, there's no. No one's been able to find any direct evidence of him actually being related to Admiral Bird. Absolutely. It's just his claim that he is, um, and that he's yeah. like the nephew of or something. Um, but yeah, but he, he confirms to actually be, have been in the presence of Valiant Thor. Now I, I didn't, I couldn't see anything as that explained the context in which no. that he was in his presence or what, why he was there, what was discussed or, you know, kind of anything like that. But that was certainly, um, again it's it's those mentioned. things that you know it's just take my word for it just take yeah, my exactly. word for yeah it. just believe you me. know i've got no reason to lie totally, it just seems like that that i was expecting with this the story of valiant thought like you no doubt i was expecting so much more out of it i was expecting absolutely. something along yeah. the same sort of lines as injured cold yeah definitely yeah, um, absolutely and I'm, I'm probably and no doubt you guys are listening are feeling it as well. The disappointment yeah. that <laughs> actually just all sounds like yeah. bollocks. <laughs> it is. It does for the most part seem like a lot of nonsense. Now, if he'd left it up until the point that Thor leaves the Pentagon, I would have been like, yeah, do you know what? I'm, I'm on board with this. I think it yeah. happened. There's enough. There's a few details missing that we've gone over, but do you know what? In the grand scheme of things, I can live with it. But the fact there's that enough there to keep the mystery going. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And the, but the fact that he keeps it going and he keeps it going in the way that he does, and it takes a complete 180 and kind of goes, you know, the other way. That's kind of what you know. It that, goes to the power of, of the Almighty me. God and exactly, Jesus Christ yeah. being our Lord and Saviour, and that yeah. Valiant Thor. All that, that's something as well that he says in the book. Although Valiant Thor is created and he is held to a high esteem he's not yeah. at the same level as jesus christ so exactly even though yeah. god created valiant thor yeah and he created jesus yeah. jesus is still god in his image but valiant thor isn't yeah exactly yeah i don't know how that works i don't know how that works and he was again he was a, he clearly it did work he was a religious man as well so for him to come out with that claim if it is made up absolutely does, yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's 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 interesting. I mean, look, they were there was a lot of other things that I know we both come across, um, which also do kind of shine light on this as to the fact that it is a hoax and a fabrication. It's a character it's, reference against strangers, which I, I'm reluctant to go into, mostly because I don't want this to be a slanging match where we're just tearing into the guy and. Trying I mean, to drag the, his name through the mud. Um, he's no longer with us anymore. Well, anymore, that's what I was anyway. going to say. And not only it's... do we not want to do that anyway, because that's not what we want to be about on this podcast. But also, as you rightly say, yeah, he's sadly he's no longer with us. I think he passed back in two thousand and eight. Was it? It was two thousand nine. Was, was it later than that? that? I think it was, around, it was around. Yeah, around that sort of time. Anyway, so yeah, we we don't. I mean, there's a lot of things that you know, it, it just sort of off the you know vaguely i guess off the bat he was arrested um you know for fraud uh you know for fraudulent behavior um he was in the in trouble with the police um for essentially drug smuggling um although he he sort of pleaded to his last days that he wasn't he was wrongfully accused of that um i wouldn't all though to be yeah, honest. I, I fucking wouldn't all yeah <laughs> <laughs> um you know there were there were other things that kind of draw his character into question which we could quite easily go through you know bit by bit but it's I, it I, might I also know. it it's... might also be worth mentioning as well that God. valiant thor hasn't authored a book post 2008 well yeah i mean not only that the obvious thing is I he think... stopped publishing or co-publishing books from i think i think point. the last book that was published by or written by valiant thor 
yeah. was 2006, I think it was, if I'm reading that yeah. right. Um, which all, oh, which is very coincidental. It is because you know, that was part of my kind of theory as well about how Strangers wanted to push his, you know, kind of religious speech. You know, he'd he'd had a failed NBC show. Um, you know, he'd been sort of banned from a lot of UFO conferences in talking about this story specifically, um, yeah. because and uh, mostly because of a lot of the negative press around him because of the the fraud arrest and you know the a few other sort of character references which negatively go against him people mm. were starting to not want to talk to him anymore um and so he yeah and so he he, he kind of he burnt kind a of, couple of bridges didn't he really Let's he burnt he burnt a lot of bridges uh, some knowingly some unintentionally i think but i think the point i was getting there was that he i think he used valiant thor in the end almost as mm. a pen name yeah, like a ghostwriter sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. So people wouldn't believe it if it came from strangers, but if it comes from Valiant Thor, who people supposedly, you know, believed in, then, 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 yeah, that's 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 kind of, you know. That, yeah, that's... I think um, I think when you mentioned the the c word earlier on in in the podcast, <laughs> I think that's I think that could, could yeah. have been what he was attempting to do. Um, maybe That'd with be quite the possibly. best of intentions. Um, but he was trying to, to, you know, do his own sect. I mean, he did in, own, in the uh, early days. He did set up a few, or attempted to set up a few um, religious groups. But people, from the research that I've read, people widely believe that he did that just so he could give himself the title of president. To, yeah. To hold himself in a sort of a, a higher esteem. So well, it was also the, the, you know, the, the the what he did get arrested for with regards to the fraud. He he was trying to set up one of these uh, seed faith in. Uh, organizations you know like you get the televangelists doing yes. where you yeah, yeah, yeah. you pay well, that's, you pay yeah. to and they call it seeding which is the most which is insidious in itself it's saying you're yeah. going to seed well that was exactly what the, or a thousand dollars and then you'll and then they say you'll harvest what you what seeds you've sown yeah exactly that that's exactly what the fraud arrest was for he he got caught running a seminary um where he was charging people i think 25 pounds uh, or dollars sorry a month um to sign up to his teachings and and to to his workings to then eventually be told that they passed with you know distinct honors or you know with the highest praise and they would then come out of it at the end with a diploma in divinity themselves um as i've since learned obviously seminaries are you know very illegal and that's what he got that's what he got arrested oh, yeah. for so um yeah the, the, I, I did find a guy um on on youtube as well called michael madad i think he's yes name was. I, I was watching that actually before yeah. um we started the call and, and he, um he he quite i mean he was very spiritual um you know very in touch with with that side side of things and those sort of teachings and he was very adamant that he was at a talk with um uh, Frank Strangers, and they had Valiant Thor there as a guest speaker. And this uh, chap, Michael Madad, um, right, yeah. claims to have spoken, not only to, to have seen him, but also have spoken to him, had a conversation, um, saw uh, Strangers talking with him uh, before he just disappeared in front of his eyes. Now, didn't you know? He didn't just walk out of a door. You know, didn't just leave the building like he had the Pentagon, the White House, and any other building. He claimed yeah. this guy claims that Van Thor just disappeared in front of his eyes, and not long afterwards. And this is where some synchronicity comes in. Um, he then claims that um, that basically the men in black turned up. He said ah. that he, he said he heard the uh, you know the I guess the I didn't get that far into the video to be honest. Yeah, he basically claims that uh, an unmarked black helicopter. Uh, circled the building uh, that they were at and he, I can't remember the location for the life of me now but he said they were in the middle of nowhere in some small town in in America so there wasn't a need for helicopters to circle the building like that it wasn't a popular location there wasn't anyone there yeah. of any real notoriety it wasn't a security risk or anything like that that was going on no or... exactly um, and there were two unmarked black vehicles outside the property I think men entered the building the the helicopter circled um for a bit and then they all disappeared um 
and yeah, then they yeah, they all they sort of disappeared and that was that. So that was him, I think, trying to tie into sort of the men in black. Um but yeah, I, yeah, I, think... I think I don't I don't know too much about um about that fella to be honest. So it's I, again I only came across his video literally minutes before we started the, right. the call. So I haven't had a chance to even really yeah. look into who he is. He does a part one and a part two. Now, all I did was watch those two videos. So all I know of him is from oh, those okay. two videos. But the, I, I wanted to just put that in as just a another sort of bit of credibility because I didn't want to just kind of... Is someone else cooperating in the story? Yeah, exactly. I didn't want to just pound in on strangers and call mm. him a fraud and this, that and the other. We want to try and be as impartial as possible, regardless of what so, our own thoughts might be. Uh, which obviously we've we've covered and that we both quite confidently think that this was a, a hoax and a, a fabrication. But the reason why I wanted to just drop that in there quickly was just to kind of add another corroboration to Strange's story and claims that this guy believes, claims to have actually been in the presence of um, Valiant Thor, much like um, Harley Bird. So, um, but yeah, but I think that, um, that, that wraps us up. Um, to uh to, to end the episode i think as, as as i've previously said you know we've come off the fence quite quickly on, on we this came off this really early on quite severely we? as well to the point where we knew quite early on what side we were we were sitting on uh or, or you know standing on and uh and yeah like i say we we think that this is for the most part a complete hoax and uh and, and fabrication we we had more information regarding frank strangers as an individual that i think would have confirmed that but we wanted to yeah. keep it as impartial as possible and obviously in respect of of the man we didn't know him um so we've got no right to kind of put the boot in and, and also as scott said he's no longer with us so we wanted to keep it sort of impartial but hopefully we've given you enough of an account and enough of uh enough evidence from both sides to help you um make up your mind but yeah unfortunately this yeah. isn't a uh this isn't a, 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 a true life event, I don't think. No, no, I don't think so. I think it's um, it seems to be a, a fabricated story that's been perpetuated rather poorly. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, the guy that's been perpetuating that story isn't a particularly trustworthy person, it seems to no, be. Certainly not. Um, no, certainly And I, I mean, I'm, I'm really quite sorry about it because I was expecting a lot more. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, the same. And I, yeah, I mean, at the same time, we want to apologise to you guys as well, because that, yeah. you know, after all of this, you know, that means there's no such thing as space age blow drying toilets. I know. Gutting. I'm sorry, guys. What a revolution that would have been. <laughs> what a <laughs> I'm revolution. I'm genuinely gutted about that. Uh, oh, mate, yeah. Out of all of it, that's probably the one thing that I could have done with, to be honest. So that's, yeah, that's, that's when, no, but that, that was, yeah, that's a fantastic. Uh, or well, maybe that's our quest, answer. mate. But look, if anyone is in, yeah, exactly. If if anyone is interested in the the fluffy details, as I, you know, as I refer to it as, and the more fantastical stuff, some of which we did leave out because we some of it's brilliant. Oh, some it of really it is really is. good, but it didn't add credence to what we were trying to achieve in this uh, episode. But um, check it out. However, I, I the listen. only the only way to actually read it is with your best Ken Copeland voice. Well, and it really that. is, yeah, and it's that. fantastic. But, um, it's very, it's actually a very entertaining book. In all it honesty, it is, yeah. Like I said, I'd listened to the audio book. Scott read the actual book. Uh, it's called Stranger at the Pentagon um, by Dr. Frank E. Stranges. Um, so, if you want to read any of those more sort of fantastical or fluffy details, then definitely pick that up. It's, um, yeah, for the, for the money that it costs, which I think was only, a, I think, a fiver on Audible. Um, yeah. it was, uh, it's, it's, it's a worthy buy if you're interested in finding out sort of a little bit more, but that is, um, yeah, that is it for, for us, uh, this week, um, on, on this, uh, episode, um, different to other episodes. Um, we haven't actually decided on the next, uh, topic. No, we haven't. So, um, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to keep that as a surprise. It and, will be uh, a surprise. <laughs> I think, I think we've, I think we've both got an idea where we're, where we're going to go um it's yeah. going to keep us in the same the same part of the world um but we'll just have a we'll just have a little chat amongst ourselves and uh yeah we'll let you know as soon as we uh as soon as we decide but as always thank you for listening thank you for sticking with us i hope you've uh i hope you've enjoyed it um yes. and uh until next time it's uh goodbye see you later